hello and welcome to this week of the Saturday sit down. I have a few items to talk about the conversation with my friend Lisa Staples. And I'm going to tell you this week was a little rough for me emotionally. I think it was a combination of the 11th being the 6th anniversary of Mark's death and the powerful conversation that I had with Lisa. For the Saturday sit downs I go over the conversations again and listen to them myself and think about different things that I want to pull out. And I want to tell you, I've been trying the, the um, teleprompter, not working so much, but I do have a sheet of paper, so we're kind of going old school. So if you are not from Chicago, you may not be familiar with Garrett's popcorn. And I want to talk about that because that's one of the things that Lisa and I were reconnected on. I am born and raised Chicago and if you are a popcorn person, you want to do yourself a favor and look up Garrett's popcorn. Don't scream about how much it is to ship it to you. Just do it. Make it like your birthday gift or something like that. And then tell me what you think about Garrett's. And if you are familiar with Garrett's popcorn, give me a note in the comments and tell me your thoughts and what is your favorite Garrett's mix. Mine is the Chicago mix but with like three quarter cheese and one quarter caramel. When I fly into, oh, and they now have a Garrett's at Midway Airport. They never had that before. So if you go into Chicago, you want to check that out. No offense to the Girl Scouts and Walmart and all those other people that sell popcorn, but I don't let that stuff touch my mouth now that I've had Garrett's. It is yummy delicious. So there we go about the popcorn. One of the things that Lisa and I spoke about in this recent episode is fulfilling your life purpose. I feel like my life purpose is encouraging people. I've known that and to connect with people, but doing this since my husband passed and connecting with you in this level has taken my life purpose to a new meaning. I feel like it's literally a combination of a lot of things that I've done whether it's my business background of setting up the 501c3 nonprofit for Widowhood Real Talk, just my ability to be wanting to communicate with people and genuinely want to connect with them. I feel like this is all being used for my purpose and taking what was and has been the most difficult moments of my life and making lemonade out of lemons, taking the death of my late husband and making it something to provide encouragement and hope and healing for other people. So this is part of my life purpose. And I feel like it is a combination of a lot of things I've done to make this successful. So thank you for being here with me on this journey. Thank you for allowing me to be a part of your journey. And thank you. One of the other things that Lisa and I spoke about was my ability to know what Mark wanted when he passed, to know that he wanted to be cremated, to know that he wanted his ashes spread um, in the woods in Pennsylvania where he grew up hunting. If you are married or have someone very close to you, a significant partner, I encourage you to talk about what their final wishes are. Because one thing about living, we don't stay forever. So you could eliminate a lot of stress on yourself and for that other person to communicate what their final wishes are. Find out if somebody wants to do not resuscitate, have a living will, do all those things. Because sometimes people say, well, in case something happens, it's not in case, it's actually when. So make it easier, have the conversation, and the thing about it, once you talk about it, you record it, you go to a lawyer, living trust, all those different things. You can put them in a folder, put them in the safe. You don't have to talk about it anymore. You don't have to worry about something being in probate and having all those other different things if you take care of up front. So have the hard conversations, get some needed details in the air, put it to pen, and then you don't have to worry about it. Because when your loved one passes, it's too stressful to try to think about all the details. You kind of want it to be on autopilot. That was really helpful for me. Mark and I have been together for 32 years. I'm a talker. We spoke about a lot. We put a lot of things in writing. And when I was in that hospital and they had 
resuscitated him over 11 times. And the doctor came to me and asked me, what do you want me to do? I didn't have to feel like it was my choice making a decision by myself. I knew I was honoring Mark's wishes to not resuscitate him again. He had already had a massive heart attack and over 60, 70% of his heart had not been working for hours. I already knew his final wishes. I had his living will. Even though it was a difficult decision to make, I knew I wasn't making it on my own behalf. I was doing what he had already instructed me. So to give yourself some relief and some grace, I encourage you to do the same for yourself. One of the other things that Lisa talked about was community. She, I just love that she felt like she was the outsider looking in and she wiggled her way in to find out where she was in my community. Because when you're with your friends, you're like, they're your friend right there. But then when you're in a group of people, it's like, they know other people besides me and her willingness to feel some kind of way. But she made her presence known. She figured out what I needed based on our friendship. And she met that need. I say that to say that you may have a lot of friends. You may not. You may be the friend of someone that's grieving. It's hard. But make your ability to leverage what you know about your friend and make that how you help them. You don't have to worry about them telling you what they need. You look at your friend heart to heart, watch what's going on. And based on what you know of them, you figure out what somebody else is not doing and you make that the thing that you do. And for the person that's grieving, if you have friends that are asking you what needs to be done, tell them. Maybe you don't want to wash the dishes. Maybe your late spouse took out the trash all the time. Maybe whatever those minor things are that would eliminate something stressful for you to do, let people do that. Maybe you need to give your cell phone to somebody because so many people are texting you and calling you and you don't have the bandwidth. Maybe make a list of people to make phone calls. Whatever those things are that you can entrust somebody else to do to eliminate some stress for you, I encourage you to think about doing that. I did not want to go to bed. It was so hard when nighttime came, when everything was quiet. It seemed like the silence was so loud. The reality that Mark was not there. Lisa made a statement about thinking about Mark was going to enter the room. Oh my gosh, everybody was in the house. It seemed like we were having a bonfire. It seemed like there was a party going on and he was just running late. My mind played that over and over so many times. And I think that was my mind protecting me. So if you're having thoughts like that and it's hard realizing that your loved one has passed, that is natural. It is natural. I know you know the reality that they have. That's why you tuned in to this conversation and trying to figure out Am I the only one having this kind of thoughts? And I want to tell you that you are. There are other people having those thoughts. And it's, it's too long. It's been taboo or something not to be spoken about. And I don't want you to feel like you're alone. Another thing we talked about is when Lisa came to the hotel in Delaware the night that Mark passed. And I was sitting in that corner crying and just having that loop over and over talking about what happened. That went on and on and on because I feel like my mind was trying to reconcile with my heart what was taking place. And the only way I could try to make it a reality was to say it over and over again. So you may have walked up to a perfect stranger and told them what happened to your spouse. You may be saying the same story over and over again. It's okay because you're trying to come to terms that they have passed and you're still living. And part of come to terms of, for me were those words coming out of my mouth and my brain hearing it and trying to come to peace with it. I was stuck and frozen there for quite a few days. And as time went on, it just got a little bit more like this has really happened. So I want you to know that that is common. I have spoken to other people. I am not a therapist. I'm not a life coach. I am a woman that has loved a man for 32 years and he is no longer in this world. And I am sharing my experience with you. 
and I've shared and talked with a lot of different wood and water words and I'm leveraging those conversations sometimes too. So I can say from the vast amount of people I've spoken with that it's a thing. And that being frozen and people saying, oh, don't make any major decisions for the first year, I can attest. Literally like the second year, I started feeling like my mind was unpopulated. It sort of felt like I had been in a fog. I was watching things going on, but I wasn't uh, mentally crisp. I wasn't mentally aware of like I normally was. And after about a year, year and a half, I could start seeing my mind start functioning. It was to the point that one time I was out visiting Catherine and she was watching me drive and she was like, mom, are you okay? I feel like you're in a fog. I said, girl, yes, I am in a fog. And I was emotionally distracted. That's the, what my therapist called it. I've been emotionally distracted for about a year. And after that time, I don't know what it is about that first year, but my mind started to relax and it was a lot better. So if you're going through that and feeling like you're kind of in a fog, yeah, it's a real thing. And if you have a friend that is grieving and you feel like they're kind of off, they are. Because that, that widow, widower, you may have lost a loved one, someone else, that fog exists trying to operate in the world that is kept moving while you're in such a place of dysfunction because of your loved one passing. In time, I recommend fi finding ways to talk, to journal, find, a, find some clinicians, therapists that are helpful, your clergy, whatever your faith is, and lean into that and deal with all those questions and challenges that you have. Let's see what else is on the list. Uh, you may feel like you are literally broken. And you know what? It's okay. You won't stay there for long. But what I can say for me and other people that I spoke with, the more that I tried to fight the feeling of brokenness, more I tried to fight the feeling of sadness, it just was like double work because the sadness still came. The brokenness still came. I was trying to fight it off, but it was inevitable. And I encourage you to just lean into the pain. The price of loving someone, it, it takes much longer than right after the service is over. There are so many emotions that come after the service is over, everyone's gone back to the life, and that gaping hole of that person's absence becomes apparent when you try to have regular everyday life. Give yourself some grace in that process. It will take some time. It's six years since Mark has passed. I have moved three times. I am finally living someplace that is not something that where he lived. And I've created my own experiences in trying to determine what my life looks like. And I'm learning to be happy. I am learning to still remember him. I am learning to be able to invoke his name. But on his birthday, anniversaries, special days, it still hits me sometimes. And I try to clear out my schedule, give myself opportunity to just let it be. So if there are some things that I didn't unpack in the conversation with Lisa that you're interested in, put it in the comments and I'll do my best to make sure I get back to them. Let me make sure I look through this list again, see if I covered everything. I think I did. All right. You have a good day. Enjoy your Saturday. Bye.